Anything I say, you can ask me. Listen, I dare anybody, ask me a script. We can get it written down for you. You can take it home and research it yourself. Sure. We're not hiding any, again, anything. Read that real quick as you go. As you go. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter good, 4, sir. verse 27. Read that. And the Lord shall scatter you. He said he was going to scatter the Israelites. Among the nations. Among the nations. Clear separation. He's going to put us where all the other nations are. Go ahead. And ye shall be left few in number. See what I mean, sis? We're going to serve slavery all across the world. That's why in every nation, we are at the bottom. Every place in every, the worst parts of the neighborhoods, that's where we populate. That's where there's ghettos. When you say, when I say ghetto or project, what do you think about? But, but we keep ourselves at exactly. the bottom. You know why we keep ourselves there? We don't have unity and we exactly. fight each other. You know why? You want something to keep the laws of God. Right. When we keep the laws of God, like we just read, Le Leviticus, right, real quick, Leviticus 19.11, we keep simple laws like, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, don't steal from your brother, don't kill your brother, don't, uh, don't uh, sleep with his wife. You know what I'm saying? Don't kidnap anybody because that's going on in our communities right now. It's going lie exactly. It's the book of Leviticus. Everything you just said is going to clear up our communities. Go ahead. Chapter 19 and verse 11. Ye shall not steal. He said, well, now what? Ye shall not steal. Why is it so hard not to steal? If I see, if my brother got some new shoes, in my heart, a lot of people say, man, I can't stand that brother. Man, I want them shoes, man. I should have that. And they'll take it from that man. But in your mindset should be, your mindset, go ahead. Watch this. You can win. Let me let me let me ask y'all a question. Because I was talking to the brother over there. He's he's a pastor of a church. He's a pastor of a church. Let me ask you a question. A honest question. Do you think we can be Okay. Why do you think that? Because we are perfection on earth. Hold on, hold on. single parent homes. Because the pastors are not teaching the Bible the right way. You can be perfect, you just need to know what being perfect looks like. Right. Read what you got. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 48. This is out of Christ's mouth. Show her the red letters. That's red letters. When red letters are shown, who's talking? That's Christ. That's Christ. Be ye therefore perfect, Read. even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father is in heaven perfect, Job 1 and 1. Now I'm going to show you an example of a man who was perfect in the Bible. And there's several examples of men that were perfect in the Bible, right? But when we go to church, we get taught things that don't make sense. And that's why we go into church and we come out more confused than ever. And we'll say, we'll say, God loves everybody, but then we look at how everybody on the planet treats us, we're like, wait, don't these people go to church? Don't they say they're Christians? Then why do they treat, why do everybody treat our people so bad if God loves them? Why, it looks like God hates us, right? Read what you got. This is the book of Job, chapter one and verse one. Read. There was a man in the land of U, read. whose name was Job. We're talking about Job, read. And that man was perfect. And that man was what? That man was perfect. Why was he perfect? Because he understood what makes you perfect. Psalms 19. That man, Job, was perfect. So was Abraham. So was Noah. So was Christ. So was, uh, it's a multitude of people. So was Elijah. It was a lot of people that was perfect in the Bible. But we go to church on Sunday, which is not the Lord's Sabbath, and then we learn no one can be perfect. Then why was Job? That's a beautiful question, sis. I'm going to show you God's definition of what's perfect. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect. The Bible says God's laws are perfect. Read. Converting the soul. And they change your soul. They change your spirit. I'm going to give you an example of a law that you are keeping right now. And it is the most beautiful thing on the planet. And I wish all sisters would do what you're doing, sis. Give me that law. The laws of the Lord are perfect. Converting the soul. So if you're keeping God's laws, which are perfect, what does that make you? Okay, according to that definition. I'm going to make I'm gonna make sure right now because you're keeping the law of God. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The Bible says that a woman, this is God's law. I didn't write this. It said that a woman should not wear what belongs to a man, clothing wise. Now, what article of clothing am I wearing that universally everyone knows belongs to men? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So let's say me and you switch clothes, sis. I put on that nice, wonderful, flowy dress, and you put on my pants. We're cross-dressing. God said don't do that. But if you, in your dress, in God's divine order, you are perfect, sis. Me and my pants, as God ordained, is perfect, sis. 
But when we go to church, we get taught that the laws are done away with and no man can be perfect. And none of that is true according to the Bible. Right. Otherwise, Christ himself would not have said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father in heaven is perfect. He said, God gave you laws to keep. Do those, because God himself is not going to break those laws. Right. right? I'm going to tell you another one. Give me a... Uh, um, this level. No problem, sis. All praises, sis. No problem. I'm, I'm gonna deal with you, sis. What's your name, sis? Tisa. Tisa. Let me show you something. I know it's hot out here. I'm not gonna it's really hot out here. It's really hot out here, sis. Let me ask you a question. Where do you see yourself on this side? What's your race? We talked about that with some, um, a couple of the other brothers earlier. <laughs> Varying your answers? That's because there's various races now. You get called black, African American, Negroes, niggas, bad bees, all kinds of things, but none of those are racist. And all of those you would learn or you were taught here in this place called Babylon in the Bible, right? Let me show you one thing that, that uh, six, you are an Israelite, sis. You hear me? Your race is an Israelite. You descend from these people in the Bible. The 12 sons of Jacob or the 12 tribes of Israel. That's your history in the Bible. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Three. The ox knoweth his owner, Three. and the ass his master's crib. So these are animals and two dumb animals at that. They know where they come from. Three. But Israel does not know. But the Israelites, the real Jews, don't know where they come from. That's why you said, well, my answer for my race varies. Right. That's hip talk for I don't know. Right. God said that that would happen to the Israelites, the real Jews. That's why Kanye lost billions of dollars for saying he was a Jew. Right. That's why Kyrie Irving, they just about to punish him. That's why Nick Cannon almost lost, lost Wild and Out for saying he was a Jew. Right. Because you can't say what you really are. We spent billions and trillions of dollars to teach you as niggas, African Americans, black people, Negroes, and do all this. So that you never know that you're the people that this Bible talking about. Because if right. you did, you know what God's going to do to the people that did those things to you in this Bible? Kill them. That's what God's going to do to him. That's why it's so important for you to remain a Negro or African American and not know who you are. Because the day you find out what you really are, people in very dark places are upset about that. You understand, sis? You an Israelite. You got a flyer? Yep. Get a flyer. Oh, yeah. Read that flyer. Follow along. Teach your baby. Um, uh, besides the hunting ticket, the southern hunting ticket, what's the most discriminating document that white man has created for us to use to get a job? All of them. All, job, every, job application. Every, 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 why, why is it so important to put our race down for, on a job application for a position that we're already um, skilled to do? Right, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Hello. Hello. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against me. So why we gotta fill out a job application? I've been plumbing all my life without someone giving me a job to do it. I, I know that skill better than the person that's gonna hire me, right? Next but, question. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But God said, read. In hunger, read. and in thirst, read. and in nakedness, read. and in want of all things. And even for a job. Exactly. Even for a job, you gotta serve as a curse. You have to. Because he owns everything. That's why. What's up? I got, I got, I got one more question. Why is it so? Why, why, why is Ron DeSantis so thirsty to reverse us in Florida? Oh, you talking about? Uh, well, <laughs> good question. Good question. Why is he so? Why, go, go to Deuteronomy 33, and I think it's 29. I'm gonna show you why. Right, and then from there. Read, read what you got. I'm gonna show you why he's trying to reverse that. Because you know why. Because what's being taught on earth is going out to the people and they're believing. Right? And that's a problem. Exactly. They biblical time is up. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 and verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee? O people saved by the Lord. O people saved by the Lord, the Israelites. Read. The shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellence? Read. And thine enemies, and your enemies, the people that you gotta give your jobs from, the people that did everything evil under the sun to you, your enemies, shall be found liars unto thee. How are they gonna be found liars? Because the real teachers that's meant to teach this Bible are going to teach it properly, and they're going to be found out. So now, when we equate this Bible to the history that everyone knows exists, no one's confused that this happened to our people. Now that we're showing people that that's in the Bible, they have to say, this never happened. Right. They have to say, otherwise, they're going to be found liars and that their history is really, our history is really in the
Bible. Re Re Revelation 12. All this happened way before Hitler. Re Revelation. All that happened uh, way before Hitler. 12. And you know what I want? I think it's a, uh, yeah, the, uh, the dragon was wrong. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Get that real quick. And I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something else. Because what's, what the dragon, you know what the dragon is according to the Bible. Read what you got. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 9. Read. And the great dragon. The great dragon is talking about a race of people, a nation of people. That white man, so that we all understand who we're talking about. Read. Right. What's cast out? That old serpent. Drop down. Verse 16. Read. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood. The flood is talking about all the evil that we, the lies. The lies that the, the enemy taught us that we were indentured servants and all this other stuff that, that we, the Bible's not talking about us, we Hamites or we Africans or we cursed of Ham, all those are lies. That's the flood that's been swallowed up by this Bible, Read. Which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Which he cast out of his mouth, meaning his lies. Jesus is white, the Jews are white, uh, Christianity is the right religion. All those lies that's been swallowed up by this Bible, Read. And the dragon was wrong. And the dragon got pissed off. He got mad as hell when we started teaching this Bible the proper way. We've been in Christian church for hundreds of years, and nobody ever got mad about this Bible being taught until now. Right. Read. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, Read. and went to make war. And went to what? And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Now, what does that look like? Telling kids in school now that slavery didn't happen. Right. Slavery was a good thing. Right. It wasn't as bad as you think it was. Why? Because those kids, if they grow up learning what we know, they gonna fight against them. They gonna bring down the establishment. They gonna destroy this world with this Bible. And that can't happen. They're afraid of the children. That's why before they're, they're old enough to be that, they already know about Christmas, birthdays, and white man Jesus. Right. Before they're old enough to walk, they know all those things. There is a war out for your souls, and it starts when you're as early as a baby. Right. Why do That's we, what it is. Then why do people say, G, uh, put the Lord's name in vain when they curse, or or, or when 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 they want help, or when they in, in, in they need? They always say Jesus. Uh, G, G, they, they say Jesus after this and all this stuff right. when they get mad. That's not cursing according to the Bible. Cursing according to the Bible is like if I sit up there and say, I hope you die. That's cursing you. That's cursing. That's cursing you, right? According to the Bible. Cursing the Bible is also this. Read what you got. 30 and I think it's a uh, 9. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 9. Read. Lest I be fool. Side verse uh, 8. Verse 8. Read. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Uh -huh. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Read. Feed me with food. I got one of yeah, yeah. for me. Read. Lest I be fool and deny thee. Read. And say, who is the Lord? Read. Or lest I be poor and steal uh -huh. and take the name of my God in vain. So doing against the commandments of God is taking the Lord's name in vain or cursing the Bible. Right. Give me that in, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Matthew 15 and I think it's 3. I'm going to show you something else. Because there's a lot of children. How y'all doing, sister? Y'all come up. Y'all come up. I love your dress, sis, and your afro, sis. You know God got that hair? Let me show you something real quick. Where, where in the Bible can I, can I say that God got that hair, sis? I gotta show you that God got that hair, sis. Watch this. Watch this. Come, come up here, sis. Read that. Real it's the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 3. Read. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God? Why you transgress God's commandments? Read. By your tradition. By your traditions. This is a tradition. Today is the Sabbath. Many people out here selling and buying on God's Sabbath. Right. They are breaking God's commandments right. for their tradition, for their African American tradition. Right. Read. Right. And proud of it, right? Read. For God commanded. For God commanded. Say, honor thy father and mother. Honor your father and your mother. Read. And he that curseth father or mother. How do you curse your father and mother? By not doing what they tell you to do. Right. By not doing what God said, do it. Honor your father and your mother. Read that again. And he that curseth father your or honor. mother. Your honor. Let him die the death. Let him die. God said, God said he's going to condemn him. Right? So when you go against the commandments of God, that's cursing according to the Bible. Right. You curse God, you curse your people by teaching them and breaking God's commandments. That's right. Does that make sense? Right. That makes sense. by example.
And finally, my brother, be